Now then, they say a picture paints a thousand words, and goodness me, certainly true of the now discredited photo of the Princess of Wales, which has sparked hundreds of articles and social media posts since it was released on Mother's Day. And the royal news hasn't stopped there, with other members of the family also dominating headlines over the weekend. Today, we're joined by Giles and Camilla to discuss all the latest news from Buckingham Palace and beyond. I think, Giles, when we were on air and they released the statement about that photograph, we all kind of felt like, right, maybe that's it. That'll be done. We are still talking about this a week later and the, and the speculation surrounding what's happened to the Princess of Wales and the photographs and all that hasn't stopped either, has it? Well, you were slightly surprised when I quoted Shakespeare at you and you said, mm, really, is that interesting? And I <laughs> quoted a line from Twelfth Night, a play performed in front of Elizabeth I, mm -hmm. and the line was, what great ones do, the less will prattle of. The point being that for 500 years we have been gossiping about royalty. That's part of the nature of the beast. When Elizabeth I was around, people were saying, Oh, is that a wig she's wearing? Is her hair really red? Oh, my, is that person over there her lover or is that her next lover? People love to gossip about royalty. It has been going on for literally hundreds of years. And we have in our royal family, well, people who are... This is the worry, I know, of the late Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. He said, media are turning us into a soap opera. Mm. And there has been an element of that. I think both the late Queen and Prince Philip worried about them becoming celebrities. Is it just the media that's doing that, though, Camilla? Camilla, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, mm. we report on it, we talk about it. As Giles was saying, people like to speculate about it. But there is elements within the family that have caused that sort of soap opera... Yeah, sort of I mean, obviously, the media does cover things very closely, maybe too closely at times. At the same time, I think... Uh, the royal family has been described as not so much a nuclear family as a thermonuclear one. Mm. And in the past, it's become a soap opera because of the royals themselves. If you think about the Duke of York saga, if you think about Megxit, if you think about other trials and tribulations. In the case of the Princess of Wales, I'm slightly sort of perplexed by the ongoing conspiracy theories. They made it very clear when she underwent this abdominal surgery back in January. And don't forget, she was in hospital for 13 nights. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone that knows anyone that's been in hospital, that is a long mm -hmm. stretch mm -hmm. to be in the London clinic. And they said categorically that she wouldn't be back on royal duties until at least Easter. Mm -hmm. So everyone's asking, where is she? We know where she is. She's convalescing at home. Um, I find it sort of unbelievable the, the, the lengths that some people on social media are going to to try and create a drama that isn't actually there. Well, there they've been odd excitements because yeah. there have been sightings. Yes. She was sighted in a car with her mother <laughs> and this weekend I think she was sighted in a farm shop. Well, yes. well she would be sighted occasionally. buying something with a hand that wasn't was steady. I mean, Extraordinary. It's and it looked like her. It was Catherine. <laughs> I think we may see her on Sunday, in fact. There is Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. Is it this Sunday? Not or Sunday this Sunday. Week? Sunday, Sunday week. week. I think there's a service in St George's Chapel in Windsor, the family normally go to that, and it's possible we may see her then with the rest of the family. But who if knows? we don't, it's, it's not the end of the world. I mean, this is a woman who, when she was dating William ahead of their wedding in 2011, was very visible. She's been very visible now for two decades. So if she needs some time out to recover from an operation, I mean, I wrote a piece of the Telegraph the weekend saying the saddest part of all this is that she felt she needed to be visible on Mother's Day. I thought it was a nice and sweet gesture mm. to be surrounded by her children, but that was clearly in response to a degree of hysteria on social media about where she was, even though we knew where she was the whole time anyway. Mm. You know, would this would a, would, would a man have been treated in this regard? Right. If a man wants to take a step back from public life because they're undergoing an operation, mm. they'd have just been left alone. But because it's the princess, and because, you know, visually she's very pleasing and everyone wants to check up on her. But I just think the way she's been treated over the past couple of weeks has been appalling. We have Prince Louis's birthday coming up. But Are we going to get a photograph of Prince Louis? Yes. Who is going to take it? Is William going to take it? Is Catherine going to take it? Are they going to bring in a one of the world's great photographers to take it? Maybe they should get a professional this time. I mean, I quite like the whole royal family album being shared. And in fact, it's been a very shrewd move by Kate because it's killed the paparazzi market for photography stone dead. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to take a long long-range shot by a pap no. of a royal child when you can have a picture by their own mother or father. Obviously, they may be careful not to do too much editing to the image this but time around. If I were them, I would get Chris Jackson of Getty. Uh, He's a photographer who Other does photographers lots. are available. I, I'm, just, I'm just promoting him. He does, he, uh, declaration, he's a friend of mine. But he also is an ace photographer of royals. He took that famous, one of the last pictures of the late Queen. Yes. He's a wonderful photographer. Mm. He's at ease with them. Then it's an agency has come in, taken the snap, 
out it goes. Mm. The, the thing is, though, Camilla, and you say you think she's been treated really badly and would this happen to, to, to if it was a male member of the royal family, there was real concern because people want to know she's all right. Now. I know, they but... care about her. It's not just because she's female, I don't think. I think it's actually there's a genuine... And we talked about this last week. That if there's a vacuum of information, mm. people will always try and fill that vacuum and speculate, and that will grow but and ben, that will grow. And my, my point is about some of the behaviour on social media, as is ever the case, and you're both in high-profile positions, so you know what this is like. So does Giles, so do I. You know, the treatment on social media of members of the royal family, but particularly female ones, and it's the same in the political sphere in show business, is appalling. Some of the stuff that's been said about her while she is, remember, recovering from a serious operation has been appalling. And there's constantly a dialogue about the media, but actually the media are subject to regulations, rules and laws. That's why uh, the media, for instance, the, the mainstream media didn't publish that image of her driving with her uh, mother, Carol, mm -hmm. through Windsor. But instead, you've got an online world that continues to publish with impunity, people saying things that they've got no evidence to back up whatsoever. Yeah. And it creates less this regulated. feeding frenzy. There's nothing new in this. Let me take you back to 1948. Oh, brilliant. And the birth of the present king, <laughs> yes. King Charles III, born in November 1948. Uh -huh. There were no pictures of, issued of him for about 13 days. And speculation became rife. Is he malformed? Mm -hmm. Is he... Does there something wrong with his face? What is going on? So this is all those years ago, 75 years ago. You know, uh, Queen Victoria supposedly said we need to be seen to be believed. And it's a great point, isn't it? Yeah. But we, what we do know, though, Camilla, is that they can brief the press as well. Yeah. So you, we know that within the royal household at times, William and Kate will often brief the press so they know what's going on. Are you think that, do you think that briefing has stopped completely? Not really. I mean, obviously, they don't brief personally. They've got people on their sure. behalf to do so. And I think the briefing that came in at the weekend, actually, because the Sunday Times wrote a story suggesting that in the fullness of time, the princess may discuss what she's had done. Right. If she thinks it will be of public benefit. I mean, the other thing that happened, of course, is that you had the king being very mm. honest about his prostate surgery mm. and then a degree of mystery now about what it was, the procedure that Kate had. Mm. She's more than entitled to keep her medical records private. We're not entitled to know, but she might want to share it for the public good. So let's wait and see for that. So, yeah, the guidance coming from Kensington Palace is she's doing well, she's recovering, but it's exactly as it was stated in January. She won't be back until Easter or afterwards. But let's turn our attention to California. Oh, yes! Because, come on now. I mean, let's enjoy all this. <laughs> we Let's celebrate the royal family. It's a good thing. It's good for Brand Britain. And we have this ongoing sort of drama, whether it's real or imagined, I don't know, between London and Britain and what is happening in California with Meghan and Harry. And Meghan is launching a new brand with an interesting name. Go on. What is it called? Oh, it's three words. Hang on. Yeah. American exactly. Riviera. Riviera. Orchard. Yeah. Orchard. I, 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 you see, it's not stripping off the tongue <laughs> as lightly as it should. And what is she selling? Uh, it's not Shakespeare, is it, Charles? The, the way this is filmed, ironically, slightly reminds me of the opening sequence of Succession. <laughs> it does, <yes. laughs> Which is interesting, right. isn't it, because of that parallel. I mean, to personally speaking, I, I'm all for this because I want to see what Meghan is going to be producing. Do you think the world needs another lifestyle brand it by a royal? All, this was always going to happen. This had been in the planning for yeah. months and years because she had TIG, her lifestyle blog, Correct. and it was always said that she was going to try and um, impersonate sort of Martha Stewart in America and be a lifestyle guru. And to be fair, that TIG website, which obviously we were pouring all over at the time that their um, relationship yeah. became public, it, it was wound down. But there were some, you know, really interesting sort of aesthetically pleasing things on Lifestyle. that. And she was quite a good curator of those sorts of things. So actually, this could prove to be a real success. She will do this really well. In the future, I f foresee her standing over there at this point and we throw to her, Megs, we'll be saying, Megs in a casual way, what's the jam you've got for us today? <laughs> oh, OK, because cause she's doing jams, apparently. Is she doing oh, jams? I thought you were just getting Desserts. street jams. No. What's the well, jam really, today? Really, <laughs> really, she is offering us lovely flavoured jams with lovely, oh, um, lovely. California flavours, whatever they may be. Uh, fig. Fig. There fig. was concerns, though, wasn't it, that, that American 
Riviera Orchard might be just the what three words of dress for where they were. Someone, right. some, someone worked out, you know, this the app, yes. what three words, so you can work out where you are, you get three words as to where you are yeah. anywhere in the world. Oh. But actually they went and they sort of, someone went to where she is to try and work out if she'd actually just named it after what three words. She hasn't apparently. I wonder yeah. where American Riviera Orchard actually That's a great, now like that's a great middle question. Middle of Kazakhstan someone or Someone work out where actually they But it's a nightmare like because of the, you know, the licence having words that will be legitimate that you can use, because there's so few words are left to use. You can't use apple, you can't use orange. There's right. so many things you can't use. So they've chosen quite well. American, but that the, seems like quite a it's a, word. it's a big word, it's a big word. But then you combine that with the orchard and the Riviera. But is it going to be You've called, like, Arrow? But the main thing <laughs> <Sure>. is... <laughs> did you listen to the music that came Beautiful. with it? Nancy Wilson, I wish you love. And that is her message to us, and that is my message by way of return. Let's make it work for her. Oh. I'm ready to sign up. Maybe I'll be, Do you think she'll be doing an air fryer? Are they called air fryers? Quite possibly. Sure. We I'm, haven't got I'm one still. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to buy, if she's offering a, a Megan air fryer, that's the one I want. The Meg fry. Meg fry. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> With a side of fifth jam. <laughs> ah, there's yes. something in that. Uh, so much still to talk about with uh -huh. these two.